this is a quick demo of the RTL 2832U um, DTV dongle used as a DSR. Uh, this particular one, I believe, has the uh, R820 uh, tuner in it. The uh, software-defined radio itself is fairly simple. Um, basically, all it is is um, a box with a switch on it that allows you to switch between uh, standard tuning or up converting to the hand bands, uh, two LEDs to indicate, and an LED to indicate that it's powered. Um, on the back, all we have is an RF connector and a USB connector. Inside the radio is pretty simple. Here's the RTL tuner uh, removed from its casing, the uh, USB cable soldered directly to the board, power for the hammer up converter is taken off the USB connection on the RTL tuner. The uh, single pole double throw switch was removed from the board and relocated to the front of the chassis. Um, this one is a double pole double throw and uh, the second half of the switch is just used to control the two LEDs to show you what state it's in. The, uh, the uh, tuner and the converter are connected together with uh, an MCA to MCX cable. Uh, the cables were purchased on eBay for about three dollars each. Um, this one I've soldered a piece of uh, desoldering braid to it just because this is a press fit and I wanted to make sure that it was going to be uh, a solid connection. It wasn't going to pop loose. Uh, for the RF connector I purchased uh, a connector with an SMA connector on the back and used an SMA to SMA cable to connect it to the Hammett Up converter. So the radio is patched through my long wire antenna through network of switches. Uh, the RTL will actually tune from roughly around 25 megahertz to just shy of 1900 megahertz. I think it tops out at uh, 1.866 gigahertz or so. So the software of choice uh, that I'm using is uh, HDSDR. Um, it's pretty simple to set up. Uh, there's a couple drivers available online um, that allow direct data sampling from the RTL. And there is a dynamic link library that you drop into the folder for HDSDR and allows it to talk to the driver. Fairly simple and straightforward. There's a bunch of websites. Basically, all I had to do was search up uh, the RTL SDR with HDSDR in Google, and it uh, came up with a bunch of hits. So I'll give you a little bit of a demonstration on the kind of things that you can actually see with this receiver. The dynamic range isn't that great because the receiver was designed for picking up terrestrial television at close range. So it was designed with the intention that they're going to be receiving fairly strong signals, not trying to use it to DX or pull in weak signals. Um, though, surprisingly, considering the receiver only cost me about $12 from eBay shipped, uh, it does perform quite well. Um, the downside to the uh, up converter, though, as I'll show you later on, is uh, a lot of intermodulation uh, from stronger signals um, because you are adding another uh, intermediate frequency into the mix uh, to up convert it. So I'll start up our uh, DSDR. Uh, what we're looking at right now is our local uh, Motorola trunking uh, network for our um, police and emergency EMS. Um, I'll turn on my scanner here. I'm monitoring it on the same frequency on the the same uh, trunking system. So over here you can see the uh, primary and secondary control channels. Uh, we'll hover over top of them. You can hear the digital noise. Um, you'll see the channels pop up. Um, as people key up the radios or as the radios uh, link up with the network. 22. 
Right here you can see somebody keyed up their radio and they're speaking, it's analog channel. A lot of times you'll see two signals. And uh, what we've got here, if I'll pause this, is this guy here is your simplex frequency, the output frequency from the radio. Uh, the higher intensity signal over here is actually the signal that's being repeated by the trunking network and and uh, that's what the other radios will pick up on. So I've moved back, uh, moved down to 412 megahertz. Um, this is our local LTR trunking network. Uh, this network unfortunately is not as active as the Motorola network. Uh, there's a lot of digital stuff going on, control channels and other things like that. Uh, however, it's not overly active, so um, I'd probably have to sit here for a while to actually pick up um, anything analog, any voice that we could listen to. So up in the 900 megahertz range, um, this is typically uh, where you're going to find cordless phones. Uh, usually around 904 megahertz up to about 927 megahertz. Um, However, there's not a lot of activity here. Actually, I uh, haven't really... Here's a really weak one on the side here. You probably won't be able to hear it. Now, the dynamic range is not uh, that great on the receiver for picking up really, really weak signals. Um, but you can see there is a signal here, here. Um, sitting right in the noise floor, though, so you can't hear it. Um, so, but because uh, most of most of uh, most consumers have moved up to the higher 5.8 gigahertz, uh, you know, encrypted uh, cordless phones, you, you don't really see a lot out here. And just to show you that this is, is indeed the cordless phone range, I've uh, picked up this older 900 megahertz uh, cordless phone uh, set from the local thrift store for about five dollars and. Uh, when I turn on the handset, we have the uh, handset um, transmitting to the base, which is not actually connected to the telephone line. But uh, you can pick up the narrowband FM. Another interesting range is the uh, GMRS FRS frequencies. Um, these are usually fairly dead, uh, especially at this time of night. Um, However, the odd time you can hear some interesting stuff on it. Um, I've got my uh, my HT programmed. Uh, I got channel five in there, 462.6625 megahertz, and I key up the radio. Uh, there's going to be a whole crap load of harmonics on the screen because I'm like two feet away from the radio receiver, putting out five watts, so it's going to swamp it. Um, but you can see. Right there, that's the uh, FRS, GMRS uh, frequency right there, right on frequency. This is another interesting range, uh, from about 49 megahertz to, uh, to 50 megahertz. It's where you're, you're going to find your old cordless phones. Um, pretty much nobody uses them anymore. And right in this range here, from 49.8 to 49.9 is where you're going to find your baby monitors. Um, unfortunately, this uh, section here is pretty noisy. A lot of this is harmonics and stuff, and this is where you can start to see how noisy the receiver is when you start to get uh, down in its uh, to the edges of of its tunable range. Um, it doesn't have that great of rejection. I mean, it was designed to pick up television frequencies in the VHF UHF range. Um, there used to be a couple baby monitors in the neighborhood, but uh, haven't been able to pick any of them up in probably the past four or five months, so they must have been shut off. Um, just past 50 megahertz here, we've got a beacon, uh, CW. Literally, it just repeats the same thing over and over again. Call sign is V4VHF. Um, 
not really much interesting down here. The odd time you can uh, you can hear some amateur radio operators in the 50 megahertz uh, area, but uh, it's uh, usually very short uh, range communication and. This is the FM broadcast band. Um, I mean, you wouldn't really particularly go and uh, mess around with an SDR on the F FM broadcast band. Um, I mean, you just pick up a regular FM radio, especially with these uh, RTL tuners. Um, because of the dynamic range, you're not really going to do any FM DX with these things. The local stations pretty much... Uh, swamp out anything around that you'd be able to pick, anything that you'd be able to pick up, uh, DX-wise. Um, the, uh, HDSDR is not great for listening to FM broadcast band. Um, the bandwidth that it allows you for FM is just, it's not quite enough, so you get a really distorted, uh, nasty sounding, uh, audio. So now comes the part where we're going to show off the uh, up converter um, in conjunction with the RTL. So we'll switch the uh, up converter on and the uh, intermediate frequencies that it's using is 125 megahertz. So we'll punch in 125 megahertz and basically 125 is zero in uh, in this case. Zoom the spectrum in here. You can see this is where the uh where the tuner starts to have some of its issues when it comes uh when it comes to uh intermodulation uh from strong signals. We're below the AM broadcast band and uh, already we've got harmonics from the uh strong local signals. You can get up into the AM broadcast band, and we're still not there yet, we've still got harmonics. Yeah, so, that guy right there, that's six, 680 kilohertz, um, we're picking it up at 347 kilohertz, so there's uh, quite a bit of intermodulation with the stronger signals. Um, get up into the broadcast band here, and here we go. There's 680 C CJOB. That is the station we were picking up earlier below the broadcast band. So I've tuned between 130 to 139 megahertz. I've got this, the spectrum uh, zoomed between 139 megahertz to 139.260 uh, megahertz. Um, so we're pretty much right on a, a good first two-thirds of the uh, 20 meter amateur band, um, which uh, tends to be quite busy uh, almost all the time. You can usually always find something here. The um, thing to keep in mind is when you're using the up converter, um, you have to add the frequency you want to tune to the intermediate frequency. So we want to tune up to 14 megahertz into the 20 meter amateur band. We have to add the 14 megahertz to the 135, 125 megahertz intermediate frequency, and that's going to give us 139 megahertz. And at that point, once you've tuned yourself there, you basically, uh, what I usually do is just ignore the first chunk of the uh, frequency here. So ignore the 139, and whatever you're tuning yourself to here uh, in your kilohertz uh, range is going to be your. Uh, your actual tuned frequency, um, you basically consider that, uh, pretend that that 139 is 14, and if you wanted to say tune to 14 point, uh, I don't know, 075, uh, you would tune to 139.075, and you're, you'll be right on frequency. Uh, so there's quite a bit of, uh, Quite a bit of action on the bands right now. We got some CW. 
right up at the uh, front of the band in the first uh, 100 kilohertz. Uh, we've got some upper side band up over here poking up, uh, so we can switch over to USB and. Uh, I've got a little bit of radio teletype over here. megahertz um, right around the 162.5 range uh, we've got our weather channels um, this is our local tower here there is another one distant tower right here the other night it was coming in quite strong and I could actually listen to it However, tonight it is a very, very weak signal, and you can see the difference in the intensity on them. Strong wind, warning in effect. Wind northwest, 15 knots. So this chunk of the 800 megahertz range is pretty boring. Uh, this is where the old AMPS cell phone network, the old analog network, used to exist. Um, nothing here anymore, as that network's been shut down for many years. But I've got an old microtac and I can get into the service mode and I can manually force the transmitter to activate. So now we're in service mode and I'm going to enter channel 300 going to activate the carrier. Um, it's going to be this guy right here. I can adjust the output power of the cellular phone. Not that it really matters because we're in such close proximity. I can go and I can activate the carrier. I can activate the uh, audio modulator. Testing, testing, testing. So the phone still works. There is just absolutely nothing in this band anymore.